long ago I did two videos. One of them is how much it costs for me to travel to Thailand for a week and the other one is how much it costs for me to travel to Santorini for a week. So I've decided to create this series and I'm gonna call the playlist travel prices or travel price. Travel prices probably. In this series we're gonna see how much it will cost you to travel all over the world in different cities for a week. I'm doing all the work for you. I'm gonna look up tickets, hotels or Airbnbs, lunch, breakfast, dinner, attractions, how much it would all cost for a week, the budget, what to expect to go to a different city for a week. For vacation, how much it will cost because it can be very intimidating not knowing a price before you travel so I'm doing all the work for you I researched everything how much it will cost and at the end I'm gonna come up with the price adding everything together so I work from home and I don't have kids I prefer to travel either in the spring or the fall but most people travel during the summer because that's when maybe their kids have summer vacations or that's when they get vacation time from work so the dates I'm researching are gonna be for around summertime. Currency always changes, but not drastically. Only a couple dollars. Today we are traveling to Paris for a week. So I calculated and wrote down every basic tourist expenses. I'm also gonna show you screenshots so you can see it for yourself. Just to give you an idea about how much to expect to spend on your vacation to Paris. Starting with the flights. The dates are June 3rd to the 10th. So from Saturday to Saturday. Although this, the flight I chose arrives next day on Sunday. On the screenshot, you're seeing the cheapest flights I found on Expedia. So it's all around 1,100 something. I picked the 1,150 and 95 cents. This is the total price after taxes and fees. It only has one stop and the layover is pretty short. And this flight is leaving from New York. So here is the flight details. The flight itself is only $700 and $450 is for taxes and fees. Comes out to total $1,150.95. That's pretty good price. Now if you're traveling from California or maybe Houston it could be like $300 more it's always cheaper to travel to Europe from the East Coast so I think for the flight for June that's a pretty good price now let's see hotels or Airbnb what is more convenient some people like that there's room service some people like that there's always someone at the front desk. It makes them feel safer. But some people like the Airbnb privacy, especially when it's a larger group, like maybe two parents and two kids. To get a hotel, it's gonna cost more because they need more beds. But in an Airbnb, the kids can share the couch, especially if it's a pull-out couch, which is very popular in Europe. In a lot of European Airbnbs, you're gonna find a pull-out couch, specifically because more people can sleep on it. This screenshot is of the hotels in Paris and it shows pretty much all the attractions over here but I'm gonna look around the third district which is pretty close to everything not too not too far about 25 minutes from the Eiffel Tower. I want to show you average prices hotels and then I'm going to show you a cheaper hotel. So yeah, Paris is not cheap for hotels, but it's not crazy expensive. So this first hotel, new hotel Lafayette, it's $191 per night. I think it looks really, really good for its price. It's modern, it's clean, it's got good reviews. Breakfast is not included. And I'm also gonna tell you about how much it costs to pay for breakfast. It's not worth it compared to the price that I found searching menus for breakfast in Paris. So this is a, a pretty good price hotel, Lafayette. The next one I found, Hotel de France. This is $200 per night, which is kind of the average, a little over the cheap stuff but I'm gonna show you what the cheap stuff look like and then you'll realize that $200 is um, 
an average price. So this picture right here is a hotel for $70 per night. If you're on a super low budget and you're okay with this, or maybe it's okay for you. Um, I personally would not stay here. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I... This one, Hotel Excelsior Republic, this one is $112 per night. Now this looks okay too. I did not like this. I chose Oko Hotel. This is $179 per day. I think it's a really, really good price. I, I like the location. It's very almost right next to one of the subway entrances. It looks very clean, very modern. Breakfast is not included, but you can buy it for $35 per person, which is not worth it at all. For $35, you can eat so much at a bakery because I did look through prices, which was actually kind of hard to find because most of the people who post pictures on TripAdvisor, they post pictures of the food, not the prices. Some restaurants have like a little menu tab on the top that will show you the menu and prices but in most cases that was not an option for me so i really had to like research pictures to find something of prices to kind of add up how much it will cost to get a coffee and breakfast plate or some pastry so 35 dollars per person at a hotel for breakfast is not worth it not worth it at all so the total for the Oko Hotel, it came out to $1,215, which actually cost more than the flight itself. But it was the cheapest hotel at the best quality. So that's how much you would pay for a hotel. Now, Airbnb. Here's a picture of the Airbnb site. I looked up the dates, June 4 to 10, entire place. And most of the Airbnbs are literally in the third district. They're like cramped up over there. I'm guessing there's probably some kind of Airbnb law. Like in California, you're not allowed to do Airbnbs in Irvine, but you can do it in Costa Mesa or Santa Ana. So Airbnbs in this location. And I tried to also do the filter to be around the same price as the hotel to see what Airbnb offers me for something cheaper than what I'm paying for the hotel. And this is a screenshot of the hotel. So that's kind of the, the same spot I'm looking for for an Airbnb. I really like this Airbnb. This is $138 per night. It's clean. I also looked for no lofts because a lot of time it's a studio, but to make it bigger, they build a loft. If it's a high ceiling, they build, build like um, a little loft that you can go up on the stairs almost like a ladder and then it's it's pretty small space in there so i did not want to do that because uh, uh i grew up with those and it's a lot of up and down walking so i was looking for an apartment that does not have a loft so everything is in one floor pretty good size kitchen a little small but if you don't plan to cook it doesn't really matter there's a couch a tv everything you need i think 138 dollars per night is a really good price cleaning fee is only 21 dollars which is very cheap and then airbnb fee is 120 dollars so the total comes out to 970 dollars for my entire stay 1200 or 970 they're very similar they're in the same location uh, they're both very clean modern looking so which one's more worth it i like the airbnb option okay so attractions museums let's start with the museums to get to louvre it's 17 euros 18 dollars seven cents on your own but if you want a tourist guide it's gonna be between 35 to 45 dollars per person or if you have like a group then you definitely get like a group discount the louvre is open from 9 a.m to 6 p.m on weekdays and on the weekends on tuesday it's closed that's very good to know they also have a garden section truly's garden that is free to look around and here's the tickets option so i did like click on the purchase i selected on on the random day and selected my time and it's showing that general admission 17 euros the notre dame is free that's good 
Okay, next one is the Eiffel Tower. So if you want to visit, go inside the Eiffel Tower, there's two options. In my opinion, the first option is worth it because who knows what's gonna be the next time you come back to Paris. So two options, you can either go all the way to the top or you can just go to the second floor. <laughs> the second floor is cheaper. So to go all the way to the top, it's 47 and 30 cents euros, 47 euros and 30 cents and you get a glass of champagne which comes out to $49 per person to go all the way to the top and get a glass of champagne but if you want to keep it on the budget and just go to the second floor it's 18 euros and 10 cents which come out to $19 I'm gonna put the $49 in my total at the end yeah I'd rather just come here once and then go all the way to the top and never have to do it again. It's kind of like taking a driving test. Get it done once and then forget about it. The next attraction is completely optional. Disneyland in Paris. Now Disneyland in Paris has two parks. As a Disney pass holder, I know that if you go for a full day, it's worth to go to both parks. So to both parks for one day, it's $103.53. If you only want to go to one park, it's, it's like 70 some dollars. But I'm gonna put down both parks for one day. Transportation. Hop on, hop off is probably your most convenient and easiest way to get around. You can also take subway. I'm gonna get into subway. Uh, later with hop on hop off you know exactly where it's gonna stop and where it can pick you up so you don't have to look for the entrance or which way is it going so it's a lot easier but I would suggest you only get hop on hop off one day because it is a little pricey but if you can get everything done in one day it's worth it so here's a map of Paris and there's a little sign for all the attractions and the hop on hop off goes to all of these places. And there's also a river hop on hop off, although I skipped that one because I prefer to do the bus. Here's a river hop on hop off. It is only $20.22. It does not stop at as many location as the bus. I personally would skip this. If you have nothing better to do, maybe on another day, then you can try this out, just to, like get a ride on the river. And it's not too bad on the price, $20. Yeah, this is an optional. Now, for the bus, the big bus Paris, the big red buses. You're gonna see these all over the city. For this, you have multiple options. So we've got three different options for day travels and then there's a night tour which I would definitely take. What you can do is do the day tour one day and the night tour another day. I'm gonna go with the cheapest option 37 euros 80 cents. It's about 38 euros which is 40 dollars per day but you can use it as many times as you want. The night tour is 30 euros, which is $32. There's a free mobile app with live bus arrival. So it's made very easy for you to use it. I think it's a great option to get around the city, especially when, you, when you're new and you don't really know how to get around. And here's a screenshot of the bus route. It goes literally everywhere. You see number four and five is the closest to the hotel. You can literally walk there. Subways. The subway starts running at 6 a.m. all the way to almost 1 a.m. Uh, except Friday and Saturday it stops running at almost 2 a.m. because a lot of people go out. I've put links down below for all of these websites where you can buy your passes. I found this visit, uh, Paris visit travel pass, 43 euros and 30 cents, which came out to 46 dollars and 12 cents. This is an unlimited travel pass for subways. 
from zone from zone one to three, which is where everything is. The hop on hop off stops is in the zone one to three. So on this screenshot with the yellow, the yellow in the middle, that's where the zone one to three is. So if you want to travel in between this area on subways, it's gonna cost $46 for five days unlimited travel. Outside of it is the airport. You can get a five day subway ticket for $46 or a single metro ticket cost $2, one single ride, $2. So if you plan on using the subway every day, multiple times a day, $46 is what you would pay. Food, which is what I spend most for. In these videos, I'm not including souvenirs or shopping because that's completely up to you. Whatever your budget is, how much you want to spend on clothes or souvenirs or like candy to bring home, which is what I do. That's completely up to you at the end how much you want to spend on those things. I'm not putting that in here because I do spend hundreds of dollars on these things, souvenirs and clothes, but these are very basic minimum tourist spending. So for breakfast, I went on TripAdvisor and I looked up different restaurants and I compared prices. Usually for breakfast, a cappuccino is four euros 40 cents, which in dollar is four dollars 68 cents. For breakfast, you're taking croissants or any kind of pastry. They also have like long sandwiches that are delicious, which you also can have for lunch. But let's just stick to kind of pastry for breakfast. So average pastry is about two to four euros. So it's gonna cost you about two dollar for twenty eight cents for a single pastry. I'm also gonna put in some pictures here that I found where you can kind of see the prices, and I really like these boulangerie and pâtisserie. Is that how I say it? Um, so I found some prices here. Someone spent, uh, got two cappuccinos for the total of eight euros and 80 cents. For breakfast, for it looks like two people, they spent 15 euros. So if you buy coffee for seven days and they are around three euro 20 cents, uh, in one week you would spend $22.40 on coffee and on breakfast pastries around that $2 some price you would spend $15.05 on seven days for breakfast. Wow, coffee is more expensive than pastries. Lunch. When in France you have to eat crepes. I found this Paris crepe cafe that looked really good. Got good reviews too. And here's the price menu. Pretty good for the sweet crepes. You know, I think it's pretty much American prices because I've been to a few crepe places in California and on the East Coast. And it's pretty much the same exact prices. Sweet crepes are always a little bit cheaper. I am going for Nutella crepe, $8.75. I also want soup, which is $9.75. And then at another food place, I found the sandwiches and how much it actually costs because there's so many pictures of it, but I have no idea what it costs. So um, I found the sandwiches, Jumbo Boo, $8.95. And it's these sandwiches on the front, these long ones, it's ham, cheese, uh, mustard, and something else. So the price for that is around like nine euros. So the average price for lunch in Paris is around 14 euros per day. That came out to 98 euros per week, which is $104.14. Dinner time. For dinner, I selected come to della gastronomy and this time i'm gonna skip starters i don't always order starters but today definitely gonna skip it i'm gonna get dessert instead of starters so for my main this 22 euro beef stew looking really good 
And I'm also gonna get the dessert creme brulee for $10.50. The main in dollar is $23.38. Not too bad, American price. And the dessert is $11.16. In a similar restaurant, I also ordered a beer. Uh, beer is a little bit expensive, $8.50. Uh, I did order a starter, $14. 88 and my main was duck for $30.82. So the average price I'm spending on dinner per day is 40 euros, which is 280 euros equal in dollar $297.54 on dinner for a week. So on an average day, breakfast, lunch and dinner is 60 euros. $63.76 per day, which kind of balances out. Like maybe you find some street food, which is pretty cheap, and, and then you will not get lunch at a restaurant. Or maybe you have some friends who invite you for dinner and then you end up spending nothing on dinner. So this 63, it doesn't have to be every single day. It can kind of balance it out, which is I think really good because Usually my budget per day for food is $100. So 63 will be under my budget. But like I said, some days you can eat something cheaper, like maybe you want some pizza. That's gonna be a lot cheaper than duck. So it can balance it out. So what's the total? In this total, I am not including Disneyland. I am not including the boat hop on hop off. Um, and like I said, souvenirs and shopping, it's completely up to you. So with the hotel, if you stay at a hotel, it's it came out to $2,995.46. With Airbnb, it came out to $2,750.46. That almost $200 difference. Is it worth staying in an Airbnb? I think yes, because that's $200 more than you can spend on food. So an average cost for a week in Paris is gonna be around $3,000, that's including the flight, the hotel, or Airbnb, transportation, so if you get subway, if you get Uber, it's gonna be, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Uh, some Uber rides, I looked up, it was like 20 some dollars, some a little more, it kind of depends on how far you are. Yeah, it's cheaper to take the subway or the hop on hop off, or if you want, you can take taxi. Around with food and the necessary travels to get to Paris, it's gonna be around $3,000. What do you think? Is that too much or just the right amount? Pairing it to my average travels, I think this is a really good price. So that's kind of what you have to expect, unless you stay at hostels. I personally do not stay at hostels. Most people don't stay at hostels. Let me know, what do you think? Is that around $30,000 for a week in Paris? I think that's not too bad. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helped you a little bit. It's not crazy expensive to travel. You, you just have to kind of find the right time. Like I said, I looked up the flight for beginning of summer, but if you go maybe in the fall or spring, your flight is gonna be a couple hundred dollars less and your hotel is also gonna be a little bit cheaper. Next time I am doing how much it costs week in London.